In this video, we will talk about the test types. The two major test types are the functional testing and the non-functional testing. The functional testing, like we said, is talking about what the system does. So how do we know what the system does? What the system does is written in the requirements, in use cases, in functional specifications, or they may be undocumented, okay? You may seek them out, you may search for them in your product. Functional testing may be performed at all test levels, like we said in unit testing, integration system, and acceptance testing. It considers the external behavior of the software, which means that it cares about black box testing. What are the types of functional testing? Here in the ISTQB foundation level, he gives us only two examples about functional testing. The first is security testing. Security testing is considered as a type of functional testing and it cares about the functions related to detection of threats, okay? Some books and some instructors say that security testing is non-functional testing and they are not wrong, okay? Security testing may be functional and may be non-functional, but for the exam and if you face a question in the exam talking about security testing, you should consider it as a type of functional testing. The second type of functional testing is interoperability testing. This type of testing tests the capability of the software to interact with other components or systems. So if I have, for example, an Android app on my mobile, interoperability testing tests its ability to connect to Wi-Fi, to connect to mobile data, to share images through Bluetooth, through uh, Facebook Messenger, through WhatsApp, and so on. So this type of testing tests the interface between my device or my system or my component and other devices that reside next to it. Now let's talk about non-functional testing. Non-functional testing cares about how the system works, okay? It talks about the performance of the testing and it may be performed like we said at all test levels unit integration system and acceptance non-functional testing describes characteristics that can be quantified on a varying scale in most cases it considers also the black box testing let's talk about the types of non-functional testing the first type is performance testing and we divide it into two types load and stress testing okay so if i'm making a website this website is for a university and student grades are shown on this website when i tested this website the load on the website was only me i am the only person who opened it and tried using it but in real life when students go and try to get their results we can say that for example 1000 students are registered in the university so maybe 900 students login at the same time on this system load testing cares about this anticipated peak load conditions okay we anticipate okay in normal conditions we think that 800 students will log in on the system at the same time so you should test the system at 800 concurrent users and 900 concurrent users is it performing well is it fast enough or is it slow and so on on the other hand, stress testing tests to a breaking point, okay? So like we said, there are 1,000 students in our university. In stress testing, we will test at 1,000. We will test at 1,100. We will test at 1,500 until we break the system, until we know the breaking point of the system. Both types, of course, are not manual. We can't do them manually. We bring uh, like 1000 testers. It is not possible. So we use tools that simulate the behavior of the users. Second type of non-functional testing is usability testing. This type tests how much easy is our software, okay? When the user wants to go from A to B, does he have to go through many steps or it's easy and direct, okay? If our software is good, but it's not usable, people will leave it, people will close it. But if it's usable, people will love our application. The third type is maintainability testing, and maintainability testing tests whether the software is easy to be maintained or not, which means that when a problem happens to our system, can we do maintenance to it, or it's hard and slow to make maintenance to it? After functional testing and non-functional testing, we will talk about structural or 
architecture testing like we said functional and non-functional testing most of the times care about black box testing but white box testing or structural means that we give inputs to the system and we look at the code how it performs and what are the paths that our system goes through to perform our functions we should use white box testing after black box testing because black box is more important and more easy but white box is harder but it also finds harder bugs so if you want a very good system you should use white box testing after black box testing the last type of testing that we will talk about is the testing that is related to change when the software changes how do we test it and we have two types in it regression testing and retesting first retesting to understand retesting let's look at the bug life cycle when I find a bug as a tester, the bug is new, okay? And I assign it to a certain developer. The developer opens the bug and then he fixes it. And then he tells me that I am waiting for you to do retesting. The next step is that I retest the bug, okay? Retesting means that I perform exactly what I did before to find the bug. Why? So that I make sure that the developer solved the bug, okay? If I try different steps, this is not the same bug i have to use the same data the same steps that i used before and if i find the correct result that means that the bug is solved then my manager verifies the bug and it's closed so this is retesting or confirmation testing after a defect is detected and fixed we should retest the software so that we make sure that the bugs are removed next is regression testing regression testing means that i will test a part of the system that i tested before okay and it doesn't have bugs in it so why should i test it i will test this part because another part has changed which has influence and effect on this part for example i made changes for the register process in a website retesting means that we will test the register process again but regression testing means that I also will test the login function and the edit profile function. Why? These functions are not changed. Yes, but some function, which is the register, changed and those two functions are affected by this function. When do we perform regression testing? When the software or its environment is changed. Not only when the software is changed, okay, if I'm using a software on a platform and this platform has changed or updated, I have to test it again. I have to perform a regression testing so that I make sure no new bugs are introduced. Here, automation is very important. Automation testing is very important in regression testing because I can do everything manually, okay, and I can't perform regression testing on the whole system we cannot test everything so i care about the risk of not finding defects in the old modules